Coming here because of being Iranian is more complicated than yours. <laughs> so with visa and these things, so he helped a lot, and I'm so happy to be here. So a special thanks to Luis and Uh This is a project that um, we started uh, with uh, Pedro Duarte and his former PhD student Thermo, um, trying to study um, replicator equations in principle. Uh, because the, um, I think since uh, 1988, I saw papers that people trying to find the um, Hamiltonian way of describing this replicator and local water equations. And uh, uh, even from the first paper, I saw that they were uh, saying that, okay, we are trying to find a Hamiltonian description to be able to use Hegelian theory and blah, 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 like variable systems and go on. But since then, I think people either lost interest or why? For some reason, not, not many papers. I think I saw like three at most papers talking about this topic. So uh, we started with, with, with Pedro and uh, um, okay. um, this paper we introduced this uh, Hamiltonian polymatrix replicator, which is uh, an extension of replicator equations. In replicator equations, you have uh, uh, one group of people interacting uh, with each other, like a group of uh, species, or in the game theory, uh, a group of players. But in the polymatrix game, they are divided in different groups, and they interact with each other. So we introduced this polymatrix, uh, Hamiltonian polymatrix replicator using, uh, uh, in the context of Poisson geometry. And then this one, uh, this uh, asymptotic form for a map, it's uh, because the, the phase space of uh, replicator and polymatrix replicators is, uh, is a polytope. And you have singularities in the vertices, and the edges are heterochromic orbits. So this. Uh, Poinca a sympathetic Poincaré map you can use for any you can do for any heterochromic cycle. It exists a lot of um, research about this, but in this case, since we have uh, the the polytope, we use um, the structure of the polytope to simplify this asymptotic uh, Poincaré maps along the heterochromic cycle, which is made by the edges of the polytope. And uh, this is the first one I'm going to describe for, for a general polytope. But our main motivation was to study Hamiltonian polymatrix games. Okay. So I'm going to talk about Hamiltonian polymatrix games. And then finally, uh, because this asymptotic Poincare map, you can see kind of uh, linearizing the, the dynamics along the heterochromic orbit. And what I'm going to show so that this uh, for a, for the general uh, for a generic uh, polymatrix replicator, this Hamiltonian character of the replicator goes down to this linearization along the the heterochromic orbits. And I will give uh, some examples. Okay. Uh, first of all, what I mean by by polytope, uh, it's just intersection uh, of uh, the Inverse image of uh, uh, if I inverse image of the positive uh, line under some defining uh, functions, and uh, uh, so then also we, we put this uh, uh, nonlinearity um, linear in linear independence condition just to have in in if you have a d-dimensional polytope to have these simple polytopes so. In, in, in one vertex, you have D um, edges exiting the polytope. And also, uh, the, the distance from the faces is going to give a local uh, coordinate system 
near the, the vertex. Okay. Uh, so, uh, just some notations of this V I'm going to use for the set of vertices, E for the edges, and F for the, uh, uh, for the faces. And FB for all the faces that contain this vertex this V. And by a corner, I'm going to, because for example, in a three dimension, well, uh, Bolito, you have this space and there is one, only one edge exiting. So this is called uh, a corner. Uh, as I said, by this uh, linear independence condition, this, uh, this uh, x, this, the, the value of this f, because they are zero in the, in the faces. So you can see f as a, as a coordinate system. Okay. Sorry, are, are f necessarily two-dimensional faces or? No, no, it can be any dimensional. So a corner is a, a vertex, an edge, and a face many dimension. Yes, yes, that's true. So in, in two dimensions, you have these f's here, and uh, this is f1, f2, and f3. So here, this x2, uh, this uh, f2 and f3, they make uh, a coordinate system. Like this point, you have distance from this space and distance from this space. And the same happens here, and the same happens here. Okay. So uh, what I'm going to consider is the vector field analytic uh, um, the vector fields that are defined on the polytope and can be extended analytically in a neighborhood of the polytope. And the same thing with the functions. And uh, this is not any, um, actually what, what I'm going to do, it's possible to do it for smalls uh, vector fields also, but it's more troublesome. Uh, but the examples that we have, it's polymatrix replicator, which is actually more than analytic. It is a polynomial equation. So I'm going to go with the uh, analytic vector fields. So if you have a heterochronic uh, cycle, I mean the rest of the cycle is here, just uh, consider this vertex. So you can define, uh, this is the, the normal Poincare map, you consider uh, uh, a transversal here and a transversal here, and then you can define the, the, the global Poincare map along the heterochronic orbit. And you can define uh, local Poincare map so um, in general, this is not identity, but thanks to the uh, 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 <coughs> polytope structure, this is going to be identity. So I'm going to uh, uh, identify this transversal with this transversal, and only uh, the, uh, the, 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 the local Poincare maps are going to work only with the local ones. So, uh, I'm going to consider a tubular neighborhood here. Uh, for example, this one here. I, I think I, I might have a picture here. So you have these uh, vertices here. And then you consider this is a neighborhood, NV. And here, uh, NV3. So we consider tubular neighborhood along the, the edges. Okay. So, uh, I'm going to assign for every edge uh, something called its. Um, I'm going to assign to, to every polytope uh, an entity called dual polytope. Okay? Which is, uh, uh, you do it for, for an edge here. So you have uh, here uh, three uh, uh, faces. So in this one, you consider the, 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 the distance from here to here, and the, 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 the third one you, you put z zero. So only for, for, the, for, the, for a given edge, you consider uh, uh, points in uh, uh, R, and this F is the number of the faces. So for the, for the faces that doesn't contain the vertices, you put zero. And for the faces that you uh, it contain the vertices, you put this, this distance from that, that vertices. So, and the same thing you can, you can uh, do for the, for, the, for the edges. Like uh, here, you only consider this, and the rest you put zero. Okay? So, uh, 
the, then I'm going to apply this uh, 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 logarithmic change of coordinates, which is going to give me this uh, kind of blow up, because uh, this is this is the, the 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 vertices goes to the infinity because it's logarithmic, and the vertices is the point zero zero. So and we have this uh, minus here. So the vertices it's kind of. Uh, I'm not going to use the, the word blow up because there are a lot of uh, literature about blow up of the singularities, but this is not really related to that. But you can think uh, as it as a, as a blow up in this uh, uh, singularity. And the same thing here. So what happens is that, uh, as I said, the, 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 the global quantum back here and here they're going to be identity. So I'm going to identify this one with this one, this one with this one, and the same thing. So what happens? This is the dual uh, uh, polypod in R3. So okay, and what's going to happen is this: I'm going to linearize this this uh, 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 maps. The global ones are going to be identity. I'm going to linearize this one, this one, and this one, and it is going to we mean something like this. Okay. Uh, this is just a simple. So this is just uh, to explain. I had these pictures, uh, not necessary, but I didn't want to take them out. So this is how you assign. This is the the section uh, uh, of the dual polytope assigned to the vector to the vertices v1. This is v2, I think, and this is v3. And this is what the, the linearis linearization is going to look like. So uh, I'm going to define something called uh, uh, the order of the, uh, of the, of the cases. <coughs> so uh, you have this, this, is, uh, this, um, this vector field <coughs> is, is tangent to the face. Okay. So Vf sigma, if you consider a, a, a phase, Vf sigma and x is going to be zero. And then using, uh, uh, so using, I think it's Weinstein separation theorem, if I'm not mistaken. So you can use this function as a multiplication of f sigma into one order and the function that it is, uh, it is not uh, either, I think it's not completely uh, zero. On the, on the face. So this is what's called order of the face. Okay? This order is defined not just for the polytope, it is defined for the polytope and the, the, the vector field. It's something that uh, is not just for the polytope because you have the vector field here also. So uh, that's it, I think. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, I'm going to define this uh, skeletal character of, of, uh, of the vector field, uh, 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 which is a family of, uh, of vector fields like this. This is the, the value of this function h. So this is uh, what I'm trying to define is not this. Character is actually this vector field here. Okay, so this is the the, the a vector field that it, it has uh, this value if um, uh, sigma <coughs> contains the vertex p and it's zero otherwise. So uh, this is uh, the 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 flow of this uh, 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 skeletal character is what I'm going to call asymptotic on Karemba, which lives on the dual, dual polytope, okay? So, uh, and these are uh, some simple observations that if, if, if this is negative, then uh, the, the, the orbit goes out of the vertices, and if it's positive, it comes inside. So the thing is that these, these are, uh, uh, if, if the, uh, in, in, in the general case, these are the eigenvalue of the vector field at, at vertex uh, uh, 
at the singularity. If the eigenvalue is zero, you go to the next non-zero uh, component in the in the Taylor series. Okay. Uh, so <coughs> now uh, this is tangent to the to, to to this section, and I'm going to put all this. This is what what I define. I, uh, definition of the of the dual uh, polytope. <coughs> you put together all these sections, and this uh, this vector field is going to call this. Uh, yeah, I already know this. So I'm going to to use this family of function, which is logarithmic, because when it's uh, when the, uh, I hear this change of uh, The same of uh, coordinates here, they all have a uh, logarithm. But uh, if the degree is zero, this is not going to work. So if the degree is, uh, no, sorry, if the order is more than zero, uh, I'm going to use this, uh, the next functions here. <coughs> so if the degree of the vertices is zero, I'm going to use a logarithm. And if the vertices is not zero, I'm going to use this function. And this function has these properties, logarithmic, kind of properties. So uh, now this is the change of variable that I, I explained before. What they have there is, uh, I think it's missing a minus here. So it's epsilon. And I'm going to say, what is this epsilon? So, sorry, I, I think I have to find this epsilon here. No. OK, epsilon just, uh, just, uh, just uh, there's an epsilon, it's close to zero. Okay? So this is the change of variable uh, that I'm going to define, I, I, I'm going to use. And this is the concept of uh, uh, convergence. That because we are going to show that uh, this, uh, this um, global and local Poincare maps, when you send the epsilon toward the zero, they are going to converge to a linear uh, 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 Map in the dual polytope. Okay, and by the convergence, what I mean is this definition, which is the, 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 the it's kind of uh, the on the compact sets, you, you this uh, k is, is 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 in the order of k. The, the the function itself converges, the first derivative, the second derivative, and pop, 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 pop. Okay, so. Uh, now uh, this is where the epsilon comes in. So I'm going to <coughs> consider a part of this uh, uh, dual section associated to V, which has this, uh, the, the coordinates are bigger than epsilon. And I'm going to consider this, uh, this change of coordinates that I defined here. And I'm showing it with this phi x B and epsilon because it depends on the x because you have to consider the order of the vector fields, send the vertex, and it also depends on the on the epsilon. So if you consider the push part of push forward of this 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 vector uh, vector field using this this change of coordinates, uh, the, the 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 limit of this push forward when epsilon goes to zero, this is this it's this skeleton character. Okay, so. And uh, now, uh, so we have our piecewise linear vector field, which is going to give us this asymptotic Poincare map. And uh, a vertex is called attractive if, 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 if this is uh, inside pi b, if it's repelling, if minus inside, and outside of type otherwise. So this is uh, attractive. Because the vertices is here, okay. So this means that the dynamics goes toward the vertices, etc. And this is repelling, and this is uh, saddle point. So the interesting ones are the, the, the saddle points because these sections that I consider when you when you go to the dual polytope, they are here. Okay. You can start with an. Attractive one and finish in a, in a uh, no sorry you can start with a repelling one and finish in an attractive one, but uh, 
uh, the interesting results comes in when you have a, a, a cycle. Okay? All the all the edges are are, are uh, saddle. So this is also some definitions. In principle, a, a flowing edge is is when you have uh, uh, this type of uh, 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 linearization. When your skeleton character is, is a cycle. And then a neutral age is when they are equal and attractive age and uh, repelling one. So what I'm interested in is this, this flowing base. Okay, uh, so uh, this is in principle, I, I don't want to go very, very into it, but uh, just to give you an image of what, what is happening. Okay, you have this contrary maps in the polytopes and you linearize them, you get the linear uh, uh, dynamics on dual polytopes. And this is the, the flow. Uh, so, but the thing is that here in the dual polytope, uh, this, this dynamic, because this, this one here is a, is a line, but in general it could be, uh, uh, it has more dimensions, like two dimensional, three dimensional. But the, the, this, this flow, that we have here, the domain of this flow are, are cones. So if you consider this one, it could be like uh, two cones, that one cone, like your, your, your heterochromatic orbit could be like one coming and two going out. Okay, so it is going to be divided like cones. So if it's in one cone, it's going to, to, to the direction of this, edges and if it's in the other cone, it's going to go to the other direction. And this is the point. Okay. So uh, here, this picture is not, uh, I mean, it, this is just one dimensional, but if you consider it two dimensional, uh, with more uh, exiting edges, so you can see the, the, the cones. And then you can define this for, for because I defined it in one edge, so if you have a heteroclinic cycle, you can define all over the heteroclinic cycle, if all the edges are, are saddled. And then I show that, uh, so this is the, this rotating equation, so this one, in the, in the dual polytope. So this is the main theorem that it shows that the, the global boundary uh, map, when you linearize it, it goes to identity, and the local one, so this one in the polytope goes to identity, so you can identify these and these. And then uh, the, the, the local one goes to this linear map, okay? So this is what, what happens. So um, this, this one, um, what uh, the, the benefits that this lineation, linearization gives us, it's, uh, it's uh, computability, because it's a, it's a linear map, so you can, really do a lot of computations. But the thing is that any property that it's robust for this linear Poincare map, it also, the, 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 the actual Poincare map also has it. So like uh, if you have fixed point, you get a periodic orbit and the same thing happens in the polytope. If you have chaotic behavior, it's going <laughs> to, to give you chaotic behavior. And also we have some results that, uh, uh, Using this, this linear map, if it has some properties, I don't have the result here, you can calculate invariant submanifolds inside the, the polygon. So now, now, I start. Um, you have about uh, eight minutes. Eight minutes, okay. <laughs> so this, these are the, 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 the the polymatrix replicator equations that they have they come in biology and game theory. So these are, you, you have groups with N1 people, in, uh, the first group has N1 and Paul, Paul, Paul. Uh, so uh, this is called, uh, this is the, the, the polymatrix equation, which is the, the, I mean, the replicator equation is when you have one group. So this is the, the, the polymatrix equation, examples of polymatrix equation, when, when you have a one group, it's replicator equation, when you have two groups, you have a, a asymmetric replicated equation. Then you have two groups and they don't interact with, between each other. There is no interaction inside the groups. <coughs> and uh, um, this is the definition of the equilibrium. So Q 
is an equilibrium if it has this, this condition. And then uh, I define a formal equilibrium, which could be out, which is an equilibrium that could be outside the polytope. It's in the defined subspace defined by the polytope. So uh, there are some notations. What I'm going to show is that if you have a, a equilibrium, a, a formal equilibrium, you can write uh, and you define this this matrix value uh, map. Uh, then you can write the vector field uh, as uh, this matrix value map multiplied with the differential of edge, and edge is defined like this. This, this is these are the components of the uh, formal equilibrium. Okay. okay. So what we showed is that if you have this A is anti-symmetric, you have an anti-symmetric value of matrix. And what we showed is that this is a Poisson structure. Okay. So there, there was two, 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 two proofs. One was with um, singular Poisson reduction, which is the work of Rui, I think Juan Pablo and, uh, and Latu. But uh, since we, we submitted the paper for, for a game to the Journal of Games and Dynamics, so uh, they saw that it is too complicated, so they, they took it out. But we have this simple proof that if you consider this uh, diffeomorphism from uh, R n uh, alpha minus one inside the polytope, then you uh, you have this this p i is equal to this Jacobian of pi and Jacobian uh, uh, transpose, and this is a fixed matrix. So this uh, and it's anti-symmetric. If a is anti so this is a fixed constant constant anti-symmetric matrix. So it defines a Poisson structure. Um, uh, Rn, and you can push it up using this phi. So if you push it uh, using this 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 phi, uh, this one, it's going to be the one that I was talking about. Okay. So uh, and I'm going to skip this. Uh, in a recent result, uh, we, we uh, I I uh, generalized this using Dirac uh, structures and. Finally, I'm going to start. Is I'm, I'm not going to go further. For a generic polymatrix replicator, this uh, Hamiltonian character. Uh, if you have a Hamiltonian uh, uh, vector field, if the payoff matrix is anti-symmetric, then this skeleton vector field is also a Hamiltonian uh, vector field, or, or the, the asymptotic Poincaré map is also Hamiltonian. So uh, I think this. Is this is what I wanted to say. I start here. Any questions? Uh, mm -hmm. So what does the the fact that the matrix is anti-symmetric, what mm -hmm. does it say with respect to the original replicator that I use? Uh, the, the payoff matrix is, yeah. is anti-symmetric. Well, it's... Uh, it's called zero sum games in in in, in game theory mm -hmm. in biology. I don't know if, if it has any meaning, but uh, uh, because you use replicator equations to model games and mm -hmm. biological behaviors. Yes. So in the case of games, this anti-symmetry means zero sum. The payoff. Um, and if it is not anti-symmetric, do you have something else instead of Poisson? Uh, yeah, that's that's what I said here. This using you always have direct. Not always, but still you can get mm -hmm. because you know finding Hamiltonian vector fields is not is not easy. There are not there are not many around. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you, I think the, the thing with the, the people losing interest was that they were not able to find many of them. And uh, these people from biology mainly they were considering symplectic case. So, but when you go out of symplectic, when you consider Poisson, it extends a little bit the domain, and if you consider Dirac structure, it gives you a little bit more. But it's still, I mean, not, not many of them. Okay. So, uh, I basically know no game theory, so I, I can add our can following the do you have a vector field on this polytope? Yes. Does game theory give you a vector field? Yes. When they talk about Nash equilibrium, are they equilibrium in the usual sense of an equilibrium? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, it, this this equilibrium that this replicator equation has, if it is Lyapunov uh, uh, 
state, yeah. then it gives an hash. But no, not, no. not all this. Uh -huh. So then if you have the op if it's the op enough stable, that's what they call mashing. Yes, and that's essentially it to a mash equilibrium. But, the but there's some others that aren't mashed. Yes. And then what is this, all this heteroclinic structure? Uh, why, why would the game, would the game theory people want to avoid that or why do they? No, because, uh, I mean, in general, this, this is this evolutionary games. You study the dynamics, and yeah. then out of the information that you got from the dynamics, you get information about game theory or biological behavior, okay. like periodic orbits. Like if you have a periodic orbit, because these <coughs> this x's are the frequencies of the species. Ah, okay. So if you have a periodic orbit, it means yes. the permanence. Like nobody is going to, to get its Right. Right. So these heteroclinic orbits also they give information about. Uh, Biology and also game theory, I but uh, regarding the Nash equilibrium, uh, the equilibrium of the vector field uh, associates to a, a Nash equilibrium if it is Lyapunov nice, uh, stable. And this is uh, one of the results that we have here uh, uh, using this theory. Uh, this is very recent. I still have to write it up. And in the game theory, are the vector field they're typically polynomial vector fields? You're saying in the game theory there is no vector field. In game theory, oh, in game theory, there's no vector. No, field. there is no vector field. You you, you just have that equilibrium or what? Yeah, you have a a payoff matrix. Okay. And then you you, you work payoff. with that okay. and frequencies of the like this mixed strategies. Uh, you have uh, strategies that you are going to use. So it's analyzing um, situations of the game. Like what strategies is going to give you more payoffs. Mm -hmm. But to study games, you, you, you model them, like you assign for the game a, a, a dynamical system. And then you study the dynamical system, and out of information that you put here, you can okay. gain information about it. Okay. Thank you. Huh? Mm -hmm. I think there are no more questions. It's time for lunch, and uh, thank you. Okay.